We are here at part five of the five-part video series. Um, this has been super fun. Glad that uh, you've made it here. If you, if you, or if anyone ever watches this, <laughs> um, putting it all together. So we started out with bishops and rooks. We moved on to um, knights, uh, pawns, and then checkmate. So with all of these pieces in place, um, we're going to teach kids to play a normal game of chess. Um, there are some special rules like castling um, that I, I don't even re you can just start without those uh, teach them later just say hey you know how these pieces move now you want to trap the king go at it just let them play um, I would really encourage people to try uh, progressive chess if your student is open to it some kids don't like it and they get confused or whatever but Hopefully by now they're used to like learning new different variants and games. And so progressive chess is a game that I think teaches students to get to the checkmate a lot faster. And they learn with the full complexity of the board how to you know, maneuver and the joy and fun of making these crazy combinations and attacks. Um, so progressive chess is pretty fun. I like it. Um, really, really like teaching people it. But it, it can be hit or miss. So... The way it works is white gets uh, to move first. So for example, they move e4, and then black gets to move two times. So this is not normal, but it's progressive. One, two, then white gets three moves. You can go one, two, three, and people learn these fast checkmates. Um, if there's a check and it's not mate, um, the game kind of pauses up on a check and it immediately switches to the opponent's turn, and they have one turn to escape from the check. So they have to, they can't just move their knight and like take the queen. They have to move their king in this position. Can't take this, it's guarded, so I have to go here. And that's the immediate first move. Then the rest of the moves will um, will be whatever the, the person wants. So there's four moves now, I get to do one, two, um, three. So that was one taking the, the escape and then three more so that's four and then it's white's turn they get five moves there's probably a way to checkmate here um, yeah one two three checkmate and then you start over so progressive chess pretty cool um and then you can teach students the rules at some point um say hey do you know what castling is let's explain it so it's when uh, all these pieces are out of the way, and you move your king over too, and then the rook goes to the other side. Um, you're not allowed to move through check, so if the uh, opponent has a bishop up in here and your bishop's somewhere else, um, you cannot castle because there's a check. Uh, you can't do it if you've moved your king or your rook. Um, special rules, uh, pawn promotion, people might forget. I don't know, the pawn becomes a queen. So, yeah, now you're ready to just play chess. Um, the uh, last two things I'll share are zombie chess. So this is a variant in which one side of the board gets a king and four pawns. Some kids really like these variants. Um, up to you if you like them or whatever. But uh, in this one, uh, white gets two moves and black gets, just gets one. So the side with uh, with with the fewer pieces can go one two one one two one one two one um, and then if the king, for example, somehow makes it to uh, to this kind of craziness, um, I don't know. This would be a checkmate because white has successfully ensnared the black king. I'm gonna go get you one, two. Um, so yeah, there's weird rules like that. Or if you bring your queen here, I'll just take it. One, two. Obviously I would take the king, but um, that's zombie chess. And then the last uh, the last thing to share is, uh, is Grandmaster games. I really like once kids are able to play a full game of chess, um, to show them things like the opera game by Morphe 
and you just say, uh, long, long time ago, there was this guy, Paul Morphy, who was super good at chess, and these European people, well, you can read the backstory. Um, I don't actually know. Where's the backstory? Some of these games have, uh, have commentary you can find. Actually, you can find uh, probably, you can have, um, you can at this point when students really know what they're doing, you can find a lot of these YouTube videos. Um, actually, uh, Chess Network's really great. Um, I want to do the uh, opera game, Paul Morphy. Yeah, so Ben Feingold, I'm sure, is going to be funny. Um, he'll just explain this Grandmaster game. You can just play through it yourself on a board um, if you'd like. How do we get this? Oh my gosh. Let's zoom in like so. So in this game, we have uh, Paul Morphy playing against a dual team of Duke Carl and Count Iceward at the opera. What is the opera? Tell your kid about the opera. They're in a box, and uh, these guys had Paul Morphy as their guest, and they say, hey, you're super good at chess. Come play me. And Paul Morphy said, no, I don't want to. I want to watch the opera. And they said, no, like we'll do it while we're, don't worry. And so they play. Paul Morphy's not even looking. He plays this brilliant game where um, you can start to tell your students about development and say, hey, look, who's winning? Well, white is actually has a checkmate threat. And why? Because white has moved only their two center pawns, allowing the bishops to open up. And the queen and bishop are two pieces that are developed, and the opponent has no pieces developed. It's the theme of this game. Now, usually you don't recommend moving your queen all around, but Paul Morphy has really good ideas here of attacking f7, a critical weak point that you often see. Black has to defend, and Paul Morphy, instead of taking this b7 pawn, uh, which he could have done. He moves his knight to defend uh, this pawn and just develop a piece, more importantly. Next, he wants to play bishop g5 and put his knight on d5 and castle. Um, so we're going to see that, basically. Why is it not working? Come on, computer. So sad. I don't know. Well, um, yeah. Oh boy. Uh, I'll let you look up the opera game. And uh, the other one is Greco. Giacchino Greco. Oops, I won these games. Greco and Morphe, um, especially Greco really, has all these amazing games um, that are super, super fun to show kids. They illustrate basic opening principles, development, lots of little tactics. Um, yeah, immediately, why is this bad? Um, yeah, I guess you're getting checkmated, so, or you're losing this knight. And even if black takes with check, white can just move, and the same problem, right? This knight is going to be toast or checkmate. Yeah, so you can castle as black, but then your knight's toast. Um, so you can show kids these these little miniatures, and I think that's really helpful. And you can also just look at their games that they play and teach them through their experience. But again, be patient, and you often won't get to this point until a couple months after doing all those other mini games. So that's it. Uh, that's part five. That's um, maybe I'll make some follow up content or something, but. This really should be enough to help you teach your child chess.